Okay, there you go. Okay, it says I'm now the host. Yes, you are. <laughs> but, but I don't see any extra stuff come up. There's the pause. Do I need to hit the record button? Nope, that stopped. Okay, we're going. Perfect. Call the meeting to order. We have a quorum. I don't have a chair report. That takes us to committee member communications. Does anybody have anything they want to talk about uh, before we get going? Kermit, go ahead. Well, just uh, uh, the uh, a couple things on, on trails. Uh, I haven't found my map yet. I just got there. We're proposing or, or starting through a, a trails group, uh, CAT, cyclists. Uh, I can't remember what it is, but uh, we're proposing a trail uh, through starting with the uh, it's on county it's on the right away uh and i'll show you sometime during the meeting here uh where we're just proposing from the end of trenton down to the bridge down on the uh, uh area going underneath the bridge about half three quarters of a mile a, a bicycle commuter trail and this is sort of the first type of thing that we're going to propose and then we're going to work with the county and see if they will, because it's all in their land, they're, they're going to have to build it and fund it, design it, because it touches the rights away of the highway. Uh, so I'll I'll get that map up here a little, I got in a little late here. The next one is just a, a question I'm going to ask of this, I just saw this book, it's called a Condor Trail Guide, and it's a 400 mile trail, it starts down around um, Los Angeles area, works its way up on the Los Padres, comes back down through Morro Bay and then back up past the Hearst Castle, back up to the thing. Goes through Cambridge, just kind of on the casual walkways, wherever the, the person can make it through. That in conjunction with the um, uh, California Coastal Trail that's being proposed, which I've never seen any, I've seen some comments on it. I had signed up for a website and I don't even know, I guess uh, they threw me off due to lack of interest or something. But there are a couple trails going through Cambria. Um, and one more thing to add to that is in the, in the uh, future, coming up here in September, I think after the uh, county supervisors are going to have probably a, a camping, sort of a camping uh, ordinance set up, they think, not sure, but they're working on it tentatively for things like the Coverdales to build a, a, a campsite in there. But I mention this because we have a couple trails, a couple of them probably will uh, touch Kitty's area more than anything else, like the California Trail. But it's some of these things that are happening uh, that, are, that were a through community in the area. So will, would we be, we should just be tracking it and paying attention to it because I think we're, it's coming our way uh, where there's an opportunity for us just to be part of a major recreation thing. Uh, and, uh, it is going to go through Cambria as a key place because we're on the coast. So um, although it's we don't know anything about these things, uh, they're, they're happening without us and we probably ought to see how we can integrate them in with our general kind of open space uh, trails system and so forth. That's all I have. I will get that map up sometime here. Kermit, do you have any, qu any questions for Kermit? Adolf, did you have something? I just had a, a statement maybe uh, covered later, but I believe that the California Coastal Trail actually goes through the ranch. Yeah, uh, yeah. we actually have some uh, signage that says California Coastal Trail on our ranch. It's getting a little deteriorated, but we do have it. <laughs> so where does it go north and south after Fiscalini? No idea. <laughs> Don't know either. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's just one of those things that slowly it will evolve. Harry, I see it. Harry had raised his hand down there. Harry. Yeah. And initially, you you gave it a name. This trail that you're talking about, the one that comes from Rural Bay heading north, you gave it a name when you initially addressed it. What was that called? Uh, one was the Condor Condor Trail. Okay. A, the guy's got a book on it. Condor Trail Guide. Uh, first, right. kind of the first I'd ever really heard about it just recently when I stumbled into this, but I, it also, the, I know the coastal trail has been around for a long time in formation and moving very slowly. Thank you. 
Well, not that I want to belabor this point, but I love this conversation just because I've had some conversations about trying to build a bike walking path like the Bob Jones Trail in between Cambria and Cayucas, which they could also incorporate at different levels. And with all these electric bikes coming around, I feel like this yep. thing is, is coming at us and the, the more proactive we are, the better off we're going to be. And the trail you're talking about, is it the end of Trenton at the dead end of Trenton? Down yeah, the Trenton, Trenton just runs out to a dead end. It had meant to circle around to Fern, but they, they stopped it at the uh, uh, county line or the county. The highway oh, highway. that's why Fern dead ends there too. Yeah. Got we, it. We, so that's it, why uh, you should go to pros meetings because you learn stuff like that that you don't learn anywhere else. Why do <laughs> Trenton and Fern dead end? Because they didn't connect them. That's Interesting. Right. Wow. All right, Kermit, I appreciate your work. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the official ex officio reports. And we'll start with Kitty. Please let us know something beautiful. I feel so official. Um, thank you, Steve. Well, uh, it may not be a surprise, but people continue to weed on Fiscalini Ranch Preserve. It's still spring, and with that new rain, it's it's probably going to keep their work going for a little while. So every Wednesday, the crew continues, the crew of various people continue to turn out and weed. We've also been able to restart our school programs. So we've held five school programs in the last month, including two for Leffingwell and three for homeschools out of Paso. Homeschools are very flexible and provide their own transportation. So they're really easy to work with. We have three upcoming docent walks, uh, but, and uh, a pop-up we're gonna be holding on Earth, on the Saturday of Earth Day on the ranch, April 23rd. Um, we'll also be joining Green Space on the day before, on the 22nd, at the Creekside Reserve for an Earth Day gathering. Um, information, I don't know what word they're using for it, but an event. But the big news, um, as far as I'm concerned, Carlos has a lot of big news to share, but uh, this week we're taking delivery of the greenhouse frame and the benches to grow restoration plants for uh, the ranch. So we're gonna grow more Monterey pine, but also beyond Monterey pine, to understory plants in the forest and coastal sage scrub plants. If you've noticed in the areas of the forest where we've replanted over the years, there's not a lot of undergrowth um, because all we planted was pines. So now we're gonna be in a position where we're able to, there's been some planting over the years from time to time, but we'll be in a position to do it uh, on a larger scale and more systematically with last summer's survey of the understory plants in hand. So that's my big news. Kitty, where is that gonna be at? Well, let me thank Carlos again. He's, it's gonna be in the facilities yard um, next to the gas pumps. We also are working with Rancho Marino to do some growing on their property. So kind of my personal big news is I got to go on Rancho Marino and take a trail. Take a tour. Also, I should let you know there are a lot of trail cams out there. If you want to trespass, you will be seen. <laughs> Has a botanical garden ever been considered on the Fiscalini Ranch? I don't believe it's one of the things we're allowed to do. And there is a there is a native plant demonstration garden in Cambria run by Green Space. Yeah. No. No. Up up um off Burton. Yeah, I don't. Awesome. I don't think we're we're. I think gardening is uh, not allowed. Oh. Aesthetic considerations, yes, but like an actual garden is not nature preserving. There you go. Okay, more knowledge. Uh, <laughs> all right. Any questions for Kitty Kermit? No, but uh, on detail on to Kitty's things since it touches her land um, in one area. Uh, I thought I'd have this map available here for if anybody's interested in seeing it. Is Maybe it up? Can you share the screen? Ooh. 
and I see it. I don't know how to share. Do I just hit share? Yeah. Allow Zoom to share your screen. Yeah. I'm not feeling it. It's, it's down at the bottom where it has. Yeah, like, but I, I can't figure out how to get it to you. Oh, just open it and I'll share it. If you make Kermit a co-host, he can share himself. How do I make Kermit a co-host? Click on the little blue dots in his square. Got it. Make host. Change host. Kermit, you're the host. Can you do it now? Let's see. Uh, screen right here. Kermit okay. has started screen sharing. There you go. Okay, we're... Hmm. I see it. Mm -hmm. I see it. See the map? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's mine is small. Very small. Maybe make it big on your screen. <laughs> oh, see. Yeah, I got the little thing down here. Your screen sharing, Dr. Top. One thing you can do is up at the top of your screen, it says view options. You can magnify that part of it. If you go to view options and zoom ratio, you can make it 300% and then just go over and look at the map. Miss Key, lay down. Your settings, you. Lay down. Maybe 200% because 300% is a little hard to deal with. Well, let's uh, let me try one more thing. Stop for Dr. Williams again. Share sound. Share sound. Screen. Share. Add to. Okay, never mind. I can't do it. All right. I'll mail. How about I just mail everyone a copy? Yeah, do that. Okay. And you you're gonna have you're gonna have to give me back the host. You're in trouble now, so. Yeah, right. There's been a coup. <laughs> if we were only younger. <laughs> uh, okay. Tricky little devil. Uh, stop share. That's it. All right. Hey. <laughs> nice try, Kermit. You should be back. You're on. You're on again, Steve. Am I? I don't see me. You, you right. don't have it. No, you have to hit those same three little dots in my square now. Oh yeah. Okay. Got it. Hey, folks. I have the map up on my computer if you want to, if you want me to share it. Yeah. Can, can you do, can you do the share without me or do I need to give you the host? No, I can just share it. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. There yeah. we go. Got it. It's even getting bigger. Yeah. Now, see. <laughs> Very what nice. it is. I like big images. Yeah, I love that trail, Kermit. It stays pretty much on all the the, the Caltrans right away, uh, and that's why. And there's a road bed there that it hooks into after you get over the first dip out of you know Trenton, about a quarter of the way out of Trenton. But it, it's a big flat area where an existing road is, and it's pretty much um, inundated by homeless camping. Uh, and yeah. a bunch of burn piles were have been burned. They it's a lot of trash, but it'll clean that area up by right. exposing it. And then it has to kind of curl around and go downhill right to where it joins the highway. And the idea is to go under that third span, one closest to the area, and then back join join up with the Santa Rosa Creek Trail uh, that's existing. 
So that's the proposal. That's great. Anyway, that's and then we'll we will pick up other segments and other areas as we go through rather than try to do a, a big plan for the area and then fight every battle as we get to it. We'll get, fight the battle as we get to it, not just showing a whole bunch of stuff to battle. Got it. Thank sure. you, Kermit. Any other questions for Kermit before we move on to Julie and the skate park? I have a question. Go ahead. Kermit, have you talked to Caltrans? Have you started talking it's to Caltrans? Up, that we're meeting with them on, uh, we're starting through NACOG, or Northern uh, NACA, and starting through them with the process. Our first meeting will be coming up in a week or two. And then, so this is all pie in the sky until they uh, either, they won't shoot it down right away, they'll sure work at it, but uh, <laughs> that's where we'll start. Sounds like you have experience. <laughs> okay, perfect. Any other questions? All right, looks like we're moving on. We're going to go to Julie in the skate park. What do you got, Julie? Good morning. Lots of exciting things to share in regards to the skate park. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right, first I want to back up a little in regards to skate day. We had a very successful skate day. Mm -hmm. um, our net profits after paying the bills were $18,000. Wow. And another $6,000 came in the following week. So our net profit was $24,000. Mm. Um, I'm going to kind of give you a little flavor for the day. We had 70 volunteers. We had over 500 people. We had 20 vendors. We had no accidents. Isn't that awesome and i know a few of you were there so thank you for being there and supporting the event we've also finished our video and i shot that out to you guys because i know sometimes in this environment those uh, videos can be a bit long and sometimes difficult to view so please take a moment click on the link i think it's really nice to have visuals and it gives you a really clear understanding of also the demographic that was there um, i had two individuals at our front who were asking questions like, how'd you hear about us? Where'd you come from? Over 50% of the participants that were there were not from Cambria. They were from San Luis, Carpinteria, Santa Maria, Paso Robles, Fresno. Um, so it would be very interesting to know that many of those individuals who came traveled to come to be at this event. Um, but of course we had tremendous local support and uh, I thank all of those vendors and sponsors and participants uh, for being there. We had 20 pro skaters. Um, our Instagram, of course, is uh, carrying the load on that. Some really wonderful footage. And uh, we've also had the opportunity to join Central Coast Monster Skate, which is the Monster Skate series that takes place here on the Central Coast. Um, it is typically all of those skate parks that surround us, Atascadero, Los Osos, Templeton, Grover Beach, San Luis, and Paula, who runs that um, event, and each individual park is run by its own partner, um, has invited us. So we're gonna be attending two of the events. Um, Los Osos comes up this weekend, April 9th, and we'll be at San Luis Obispo's Park on May 21st, both with a pop-up, and educating the community, exterior communities, on the park coming, how they can help. And that brings us to $418,000 to include the 178 in resolution on behalf of CCSD. So we also have a great meeting right after this one um, with CBT, and that's Cambria Tourism. We are working on an ask from CBID in regards to a potential sponsorship or donation rather. Mm -hmm. When I say sponsorship, I mean a plaque placement. So I'm trying to shake the tree everywhere I can in regards to the larger asks and we've been selling bricks as well. We've sold 10. Um, three of our permanent placements on our capital campaign have already been sold, and they've been sold to locals. Um, two for 5,000 and one for 10,000. So um, um, no. we can keep going, and uh, I'm here to answer any questions. I'd love to answer any questions in regards to skate. Thank you. Well, thank you, Julie. Hey, I, one thing quickly, uh, caveat to that whole thing, check out that video that's made. That is a professionally made video by a kid from the high school. Well, he's not at the high school anymore, but that program they got out at the high school is legit, and they're making kids 
that are going to be something in that industry. And I know we got problems with our kids and we got problems with our schools, but this is one little aspect of this community that's pretty top notch. So even if you don't like skating, you should watch that video for the quality of the video itself. Uh, other than that, are there any questions for Julie? Adolf, no? Go ahead. I believe the, the, the boy's name is Magnus. I can't remember his last name at the moment, but he is, in fact, uh, did a lot of his studies for uh, that <clears throat> type of work when he was at the high school. And I guess now he's talking about getting into the industry itself. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll add to that. So Julian Mercado is the owner of Slabtown Studios. He is a Coast Union graduate. Magnus works with Julian. They've actually, I believe, been roommates down at Woodbury. Um, they're quite a success team and super talented. I continue to hire them frequently, um, but they have been the individuals doing all of our video work, our original video out at the San Luis Skate Park, and of course this one for Skate Day. So we just love having students touch all of everything at Skate Cambria. We want students touching it in all different ways. And uh, good luck at the CBD. Jim, does it help if uh, something is endorsed by the pros at the CBD? Is it CBD? Haha, <laughs> that's probably the wrong thing. Uh, the CPD? Um, I think that you've already endorsed it, I, okay. if I recall. And, and if not, I'll mention that we well, are endorsing it. You know. Yeah, I would go to that meeting. I just, I just think infrastructure is an awesome thing for that group to endorse in the community. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, there you go. Great. Thank you. Uh, so that takes us into public comment of stuff that's not on the agenda. I see Chelsea's got her hand raised. I'll go to Chelsea. How do I do that? Boom. Over here in the attendees, I see Chelsea. I allow Chelsea to talk. Boom, go ahead, Chelsea, what do you got? Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome, good day, good morning. I'm just gonna echo as usual what obviously incredible Julie has already said along with the rest of you. Um, skate day was a total success. Uh, what an honor to bring a lifetime of action sport connections. It, it was just such a sincere honor to, home, to bring all that to hometown Cambria for true first time event of its caliber. And with that said, we're so grateful. It was such a stellar success. Like Julie said, nobody got hurt and there was really not anything. It was all just good and very well received. We're still riding the wave of positivity. Um, with that said, it is really encouraging to see what a project like this can do for the community at large, not just for kids, for the grandparents that were holding their grandchildren's hand watching and seeing what we can do. So with 24K net profit in the mix, we've got more fundraising efforts on the horizon. Cambry Tourism Bureau, yes, hopefully they support us and um, along underneath that CBID because at this point, it's been such a long time since something like this has happened, if ever. So um, that's about it. I, I just, you know, for myself, yeah, we're, we're going to continue keeping the gas on the pedal and, and supporting the local community, as always, as we go and dovetail all the entities together for a very powerful end result. And that's it. And on a side note, I wanted to say to Steve, thank you for um, pointing out it's good to go to pros meetings to learn things. I kind of felt like I was in Mr. Niffin's class there just for a second, a little history on town. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, Chelsea. Uh, I see some other people in the audience that probably don't want to comment. I want to thank Mr. Clark for showing up and I'm very grateful for his work on that MOU with the skate park and the CCC. I've said that before. That's a nice touch. It's making our community better. I see uh, Ms. Univin in the audience uh, and she's, uh, you know, they're working on the swimming pool and they just want us to know that they're there. And they're going to be coming along with stuff down the road. And Beth, if you wanted to say something, all you got to do is raise your hand. You'd be more than welcome. And seeing none, and other than that, that'll take us right into Carlos. Carlos, facilities and resources. Tell us some good news. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to good to see you. Um, good morning. I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, I think Chelsea's still 
Oh, do I have to make her go away? Yeah, hold yeah, on. I think so. There you go. My bad. No worries. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just run through a couple of uh, things that are going on in the department uh, since last month. We've been uh, been fairly busy with a couple couple of items. Um, hopefully, everybody can see that. Uh, as I mentioned uh, last month, and I think the month before, uh, one of the main items that I've been working on is um, an assessment of the vets hall and the issues uh, with termites. And I was able to get a second uh, inspection done at the vets hall. The second inspe inspection came back, back and uh, it revealed the same issues that uh, the first inspection revealed, which is we have um, quite a bit of termite issues at the vet cell. Uh, same recommendation to uh, fumigate the building. Uh, so I am putting uh, as a request for 2022-2023 budget uh, for facilities and resources uh, to go ahead and fumigate the building. The estimate of that is $35,000 uh, to fumigate it. Uh, with that report came uh, a number of items uh, that were identified that needed some repairs. And so we have been working through that list uh, for a couple of months now. One of the items that we recently worked on was the stairs at the back of the vessel, which you can see in these pictures here. So we had significant, um, significant issues with the stairs on the back. We had posts that were rotted. Uh, we had stringers, stairs that were rotted away as well. Uh, so it really became a safety hazard and basically it was non-operational uh, stairways on the back. So we replaced all those damaged uh, posts, uh, stringers, we put new caps on the bottom uh, and we ended up repainting and uh, getting that fixed so that, that that repair has been completed. Uh, the other upgrade that we had made to the vet saw, which I reported about a month and a half ago, maybe two, was that we were going to um, install a keyless entry system at the vet saw. So that now has been installed. It's fully functional. Um, if you ever went to the vet saw in the past, you probably had to go up to the administration office, get a set of keys, get those signed out, put a deposit for that. When your event was done, you'd come back return the key and get your deposit back. Uh, from this point forward, uh, what we are doing now is uh, providing a uh, number and any renter that wants to access the vet soul just needs to push or enter that number and will allow that person inside the vet soul. Uh, which makes makes obviously our life a lot easier and any renter that comes in a lot, uh, it's a lot quicker process as well. Uh, also, one of the main items that uh, we've Hello. Heard, uh, oh, it's sorry. hard to hear you. There's a oh, you uh, on your there's a, there's an airplane going by. Oh, okay. Above me, so it's making quite a bit of noise here. I'll try to speak up a little bit. Uh, one of the other uh, repairs that we made at the vet saw uh, was the uh, replacement of the roof over the Legion Hall and dining room. And so you see here uh, day one where the materials were dropped off, the uh, crew was removing all the uh, rock and sediment at the top and removing the roof itself. Uh, during that removal, uh, as I suspected, because the roof had leaked for quite a bit of time, uh, there were some uh, dry rot issues with uh, some of the um, areas. So those were repaired. And you see on these pictures a brand new roof and nice. the with shiny new uh, caps. Uh, so we're very happy that uh, that's been done. Um, and, you know, we're hopeful that the roof will be there for, for a long time and we won't have any issues with it. One of the other items that came along with the roof was uh, there was a electrical line that went above the roof and down to the legion that supplied the power to that uh, building. Uh, that was cracked and it was an entry point for water intrusion into the Legion Hall. So as part of this project, we also ended up bidding out that replacement of that line, which you see there. It's uh, coming off the sub panel, uh, going along the building and then entering back into the Legion 
and uh, providing that uh, that power back in there. So that was a very clean, nice job. As you can see on the far right picture, once it's painted, uh, it matches with the other rails there, so it, it won't stand out. Um, all in all, with the additional dry rot uh, repairs and, and the additional electrical line, we, we still came under budget on that project. So that's happy for that. Uh, another item we're working at the Vetsol is uh, during our inspection, uh, there were a number of lights that were non-functional. So we are looking, uh, if you see on the right-hand picture, we have all of these uh, lights that are mounted on the walls. Uh, those are providing uh, light for um, the walkways. None of those are functioning at this time. Uh, both the um, ballast, the light bulbs, are not working. So at this point, we're going to upgrade all of those um, lights to LEDs. So we have four on that sidewall, but we also have that parking lot light, which you see on the left-hand side, that's also non-functioning. And so we're going to upgrade that to LED as well. We received recently a report from the county uh, that uh, told us that the public restroom on the east, uh, east um, village um, had a number of ADA issues. Uh, the restroom wasn't in compliance with ADA accessibility. And so my staff and I sat down, uh, looked through the 40 page report with all of these uh, issues uh, that uh, were identified in that report. Um, we were fortunate that none of those issues had um, significant cost to them. We didn't see anything, or there wasn't anything that was plumbing related where we need to where we needed to uh, move the line over or do anything of that. So um, we were able to close the restroom down for about a day, and uh, we took care of all of the ADA issues um, uh, with my staff. So that's all been resolved, uh, and obviously the restroom is now ADA compliant. Um, one of the things that I uh, just wanted to show with these pictures is um, maybe just a little insight as to maybe the inner workings of the CCSD staff, uh, particularly the staff out in the field. So, you know, sometimes people may think that uh, water department works by themselves, doing water stuff and wastewater works by themselves, doing wastewater stuff. Same thing with us. But the reality is actually we all of the departments within the CCSD have a lot of issues, whether we're understaffed or we don't have the uh, right equipment to be able to do certain tasks. Um, so over the years, uh, we have actually worked very well together within the departments. Uh, so if one department is in need of something that the other department has, we've always been um, very good at helping each other out. So this is a picture of the water department needing to pull out uh, some pumps that weren't working. Uh, they needed to get fixed. We have a piece of equipment, a small track uh, tractor that can fit inside those pump houses. Uh, and so that's what we were doing, helping those guys out, pulling those pumps out with our tractor. Uh, and then once the pumps are fixed, we also unload those pumps and put them back in there, helping those guys out getting that stuff fixed. So it's it's one of those things that a lot of people may not see, but it's something that happens pretty pretty regularly where we're helping each other out. One, one other item that uh, occurred recently is we had a vehicle uh, that went off the road, uh, veered off the road on the highway. That vehicle um, uh, ended up crashing, obviously. It took out that footbridge on the East Ranch um, this happened yesterday uh, morning. Uh, the, there was a single occupant in the vehicle. Uh, the lady was taken to the hospital. Um, fortunately, just a bump in the head, uh, so not, not significant injuries. Um, CHP came out, sheriff came out, tow truck came out, so we were able to pull that vehicle out of the ranch and get it hauled away. Unfortunately, that bridge uh, was 
severely damaged. Um, so at this point, we have pulled the bridge out. We have installed signs on uh, trails that are adjacent to that trail there. Uh, and at this point, uh, that trail is closed until further notice until we're able to get the materials uh, to be able to put that bridge back in place. Uh, some other items that actually happen on the ranch is illegal dumping. So you see uh, some of the items that have been dumped recently. On the left-hand side, you see a couch, uh, which could be from, uh, you know, maybe a homeless person that wanted to stay there. You know, I, I, I have my doubts on that. It's most likely somebody that just dumped something on the ranch. Um, and that happens every so often. Uh, on the right-hand side, you see just a pile of trash that was left. Uh, all of that was cleaned up uh, by CCSD staff. And as Kitty was mentioning, this is the time of year for weeds. And so we have been spending a significant amount of time as well uh, trying to deal with weeds, both radish, mustard, thistles. Uh, you'll see us out there uh, doing a lot of crop circles on the ranch and other properties trying to keep all of these weeds down. And if you've noticed, uh, come down to the East Ranch, you've probably noticed that it's been um, nicely mowed and it looks, looks good out there. Also, a lot of French broom got pulled out uh, last year. It was piled uh, on the East Ranch. That, those piles have now been loaded up and removed from the East Ranch. We had several trees on Victoria Way that also uh, needed to be taken out. And so CCSD staff went ahead and took those trees down as well. Uh, as you recall, last year, we had a significant storm that came through and flooded our facilities. Uh, we were displaced for about six months. Um, this, these are pictures of the last two items on that long list of uh, repairs that needed to, to be made. So on the left-hand side, you see a uh, fence that got damaged when the creek came over. Uh, that fence has now been repaired. We also had a shed uh, that you see here on these pictures that got flooded about four feet high. Uh, that was basically... Uh, Basically, was uh, we were told by our insurance that uh, we weren't going to be able to fix it because of how much water and mud was in there. So that was hauled away um, earlier this year. And we were able to pour a foundation for a new shed that was done by CCSD staff. And we were able to get a new shed built on that path. So with those repairs, that long list of stuff that uh, we had from, from that huge storm uh, has now been completed which is a significant accomplishment for our department uh, because with you know, our facility being flooded four feet high and all the trees that came down and trails and you name it, it was just a, a long list of items. And uh, at first I thought it was gonna take us years and some items I thought we weren't gonna be able to get uh, repaired or get back to to some usable state, but uh, we were able to get that done you know, in about a year, year and a half. So that's that's a, that's a very good accomplishment for our staff. Uh, that's my report and I'm happy to answer any questions. Awesome, thank you, Carlos. Any questions for Carlos? Kermit. You're muted, Kermit. The other one. Okay, uh, no, but just a, a really a, a thumbs up to the work that he's done. You know, most of us were always running with the butterflies, but they're down there where the uh, the butterflies die and and grow, and it's just nuts and bolts, and it's one damn thing after another. Like the bridge is there today, and tomorrow and tonight, somebody else runs on it and parks on it, and doesn't work. It's just the darnest thing in the parks world, where it's just. You're always working to fix stuff that most people just most of us never notice. Uh, the mm -hmm. pumps always run, and I, and no one notices. And when they fix something, it's hard to do. It's hard to to make it all fit together. But they they do. They they clumsy through it, and you can't say too much about what good work is going on there. And thank you, Carlos. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Kurt. I, appreciate I it. echo that too. That's my bridge that got destroyed down there. And I know the history of it and the hard work that you guys put into keeping that thing going through the floods and the whatnot. So thank you. Anybody else? 
All right, seeing none. Thank you, Carlos. We'll go on to the consent agenda. Can I get a uh, consideration to approve the March minutes? Kermit says yes. Jim seconds that. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. All right, that takes us into discuss and the consideration of the $20,000. So let's just cut right through the chase and say what's on the table. Is that our $20,000 to decide what to do with it? Or is it that it's the CCSD's $20,000 to tell us what to do with it? The question on hand is if we, the CCSD has committed $178,000 to the skate park. If we dump that other 20 into the skate park, that means they are dumping $198,000 into it. And is that okay of protocol? Am I, am I not seeing this correctly, Kermit? I think you're seeing it correctly. The, the, what, where I'd like to uh, go back and, and chase around a little bit is the master plan that it was devoted to. Uh, what and the other one is can we bank this twenty thousand dollars that was one of the questions if we wanted to leave it for future and if we uh what about this master plan are we not going to do that or is that something we um just do as a hobby on the side or whatever i i i'm gonna ask harry for some guidance yeah i think um utilizing the master plan would certainly be a good idea but uh, I believe probably if uh, if the district were going to suggest anything or the board it would probably be using that twenty thousand dollars perhaps toward bike trails, uh, especially since that came up uh, a little earlier here in the meeting. Uh, but uh, no, I don't think it can be used for the skate park because the allocation of the one seventy eight is pretty much all the district is going to uh, be uh, be providing for the skate park. So that twenty thousand needs to go somewhere else. Can we bank it? Uh, that's that would probably be okay, and then you just wait until uh, some project comes up that you want to use it for. Adolf, I just comment uh, if we're not able to apply that twenty thousand to the skate park and so forth and so on. <clears throat> there's there's always the things we talk about like uh, picnic tables on the East Ranch. We talk about a exercise trail around the uh, perimeter. I'm not sure that's twenty thousand dollars worth. Maybe it probably is pretty quickly. But anyway, stuff like that could be uh, taken care of. Now, if we can bank it, then we can talk about it and, and uh, schedule it. So, as American citizens, do you believe that it's safe to bank money in the government? <laughs> that's a loaded question. Well, why don't we just go to cryptocurrency? Yeah, no, that's even worse. But I, I'm more for banking it. I mean, then there's the possibility that it won't be there or whatever. But I'm, I'm not for forcing ourselves to spend something when we're not all in agreement. I second. I third. <laughs> well, as, as a point of discussion, though, um, you know, there are things that if we provide more activities on the East Ranch, it's going to make it less attractive for homeless, more attractive for kids, more attractive for families. And uh, $20,000 doesn't go very far, but by providing some kind of a walking track or something or an exercise track makes sense. And that's what pros is all about. So uh, yeah, know. as as soon as the bathrooms get built, we're, we're down that road. I'd say right now we're going to put $20,000 to the swing set so we're going to put there or the playground or whatever, you know? Yeah, okay. I think that's a no brainer. Uh, but $20,000 doesn't go very far. That's why it sounds prudent maybe to put it in the bank, but I'm not sure the government bank exists. How do we earmark that? Look, Carlos has his hand up. I wonder oh, what I'm sorry. To say. Thank you, Kitty. Carlos, what do you got? Yeah, so I, I believe that our uh, board had a slight discussion, um, if not the last board meeting, maybe the, the one before, uh, about the $20,000 and the allocation for it. Uh, and I believe uh, Board President Hal mentioned that uh, the item was going to be discussed at an upcoming board meeting. 
to provide pros with some direction on both the master plan and probably the, the $20,000 that uh, is allocated. So if, if I'm correct, I think I saw it on the draft uh, uh, agendas for, for this month that I am. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Carlos. And um, I'm comfortable. I see that there's some members in our CCSD members in the audience and Harry's here. I'm pretty comfortable that they're aware of our positions as a group and individually that I'd be comfortable tabling this until we got more direction from the board. That sounds like the wisest idea, Steve. Anybody else? I agree. I think um, maybe we need a motion to table it. I, I make motion table the second. discussion. All right, there's a first and a second. Any more discussion? All right, perfect. All in favor say aye. 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 aye we're going to table that. Okay, awesome. That takes us in to uh, receive an update on the skate park. Julie, that could be you if we haven't already heard from you, because I don't see Ray here. Do you got anything else we want to add to that? Yeah, I just I want to add about and I know Dick is on the on the call. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I want to add about the memorandum of understanding. And so the memorandum of understanding between CCC and CCSD has been completed. It is signed and done. Um, so that is a really important document in the sense of just making the public and some of its concerns and um, some board members and putting that to rest, right? We've, we've got the agreement signed. Um, I've also been part of looking at that agreement and Dick and I have spoken. Um, so everything between Skate Cambria and CCC and CCC and CCSD has all been completely completed. So. Onward we go. I'm sorry, Ray's not on the call, but last I spoke with Ray, uh, he was moving forward with the county, doing what he needs to do. And I believe, and Harry, please correct me on this one, the next meeting coming up for CCSD uh, will be discussing the proposal that will be coming in for engineering from Monty. So we're moving in the right direction. Awesome. Thank you, Julie. Thank Anybody you. else got any questions for that project? Adolf? Uh, just the thought. <clears throat> uh, you know, a, a lot of the times when projects are being put together, they use kind of a perk chart to kind of tell you what particular items are scheduled in a particular time frame. And maybe we, what we need uh, is something where we get a little bit of a head, uh, I guess, information on when some of the things that, that are outstanding that are going to happen. Uh, for example, the approval of the project plan, for example, with the county. Maybe that's covered uh, by Ray in the CCSD meetings, but I think we also ought to have that reported to us. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions, Kermit? Muted. You're muted. Um. Adolf's question, didn't we have uh, the original start did have a time frame? Is that what you're talking about, Adolf, that we should publish that so we all understand it now? No, uh, yeah, you're right. I think that, time frame in that uh, memorandum, I think. Right. I just think that we, we need to have that kind of a chart so that each meeting, when we have a meeting, we kind of know where we are and where we're going from yeah. there. Julie, Julie you, you have one, don't you? Yeah, well, we initially had the timeline that was actually submitted by Spawn Ranch. And of course, that wasn't really, it was put into documents, but not really officially accepted by CCSD. It needs to come from Ray. I mean, Ray needs to, in my opinion, put together what you're suggesting. I agree with you. Um, I, I think it would not be unusual for us to be seeing that come out within the next 36 to 60 days. I will mention it to Ray because it is needed, especially as we talk about this phase one and phase two and what that looks like. Um, the memorandum just got finished last week. So um, I, I think it would be incredibly helpful. We of course have attempted to put a timeline forward and uh, it, it, need, it really does need to come from CCSD. It needs to come okay. from Ray. 
Well, is that is that anything that needs to be pushed or that's being taken care of, do you think? I think the best way I can report on that, Kermit, is I'll be happy to bring that. I'll email okay. Ray this afternoon. Right. I, I think it it is absolutely warranted and needed for pros and for CCSD. So I'll certainly reach out to him today. Thank you. And, and when we did the dog, when we did the grading and the dog park and the parking lot, the contractor after the bid came back provided a very specific timeline for his stuff. I don't, I, Adolph is referring more to the agencies. Is that correct? Well, well, I, I, what I was, really talking about, I guess, is Ray as a project manager, and he would then have whatever documentation he is using to give us a time frame. And that's, that's kind of stuff I'm talking about. And that's basically why he's always on the list every week, is to give us those kinds of updates. Carlos, are you in confirmation with that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll pass on that. <laughs> I think that's that's Ray's uh, that's Ray's yeah, uh, right. work, and uh, as Julie was mentioning, he's 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 the one that's more aware of the time frame. Uh, he's he's the one that's spoken to the county, so he, he's he's more aware of what that time frame is. So and, there, there there are two time frames, I guess, is what you're what you're discussing. One time frame is, you know, the actual uh, process of. Um, going through the county permitting and all that and then a second is the construction phase itself yeah. uh, and i think that's what you were referring to steve when you were talking about grading and, and drainage and, and dog park anyway i feel like i feel like we're uh very anticipatory homeowners that the plan's not built yet we want to know when the tractor's going to get there joyce I, I think we should just wait till we have ray here and uh, I agree with Julie, the email might be helpful, but um, we are just sort of like going in a circle and um, let's just wait for Ray. Thank you, good point. All right, we're gonna move on, perfect. Let's go on to the East Ranch restroom project. Uh, Carlos, you would be the guy that would know the most about where we're at on that right now. Uh, same thing, that's, that's Ray's project. Yeah. Uh, he's the one that's been working on it, so I I, I don't have a, an update on that. Perfect. And you guys, I'm going to leave the, you know, at least those B and C on the agenda for the foreseeable future, right? Until the projects are done, it doesn't hurt us to have it on every month and just to say, hey, there it is. So uh, okay. other than that, anybody else have any comments? All right. Any future agenda items? All right, sounds like we're being efficient. It's 10.53, I'm gonna call this meeting adjourned. Joyce? Um, I think we should um, keep the bike trail open on our agenda. Oh, all right, let's do that. Uh -huh. Let's make sure that gets on there. All right, Joyce, let's you and I make sure because it looks like we're having some turnover at the CCSD office and let's do everything we can, which is a weird thing for me to say, but to help them in that process just because part of the time i'm part of the problem of the process so okay, well, i'll do better i'll send the report of what our official agenda should be to okay. oh to not ozana because she's yeah. not here uh but to whoever is there <laughs> okay I we'll stay diligent i appreciate everybody's efforts thank you adjourned hey.